Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Schultz. Today we have Chapter 11 of B, The Princess of the Dwarves. And here we're going to get a little bit of backstory on King Locke and see exactly what he's got hidden away in his mountain. This is in which the treasure of King Locke is described as well as possible. B had been among the dwarves for six years to a day. King Locke summoned her to his palace and ordered his treasurer in her presence to display a large stone which seemed fixed in the wall, but which was in reality only inserted into it. They all three passed through the opening left by the removal of the large stone and found themselves in a crevice of the rock where two people could not walk abreast. King Locke went forward first along the dark path and be followed, holding on to the skirt of the royal mantle. They went on walking for a long time. At times the walls of rock came so close together that the girl was afraid of being caught between them, without being able to move forward or back and of dying there. But the mantle of King Locke sped her along the dark and narrow path. At last King Locke found a bronze door, which he opened, and there was a flood of light. "'Little King Locke,' cried Bee, "'I never knew before that light was such a beautiful thing.' But King Locke, taking her by the hand, led her into the hall from which the light came, and said to her, "'Look!' Bee, dazzled, at first saw nothing, for this huge hall, resting on high marble pillars, was from floor to roof all glorious with gold. At the far end, on a dais made of sparkling gems encased in gold and in silver, and the steps of which were covered by a carpet of marvellous embroidery, was set a throne of ivory and gold with a canopy of translucent enamels. At its sides, two palm trees, three thousand years old, rose from two gigantic vessels carved long ago by the best craftsmen of the dwarfs. King Lox sat down on his throne and made the young girl stand on his right hand. B, he said to her, this is my treasure. Choose whatever you like. Immense shields of gold hung to the pillars, caught the sunbeams and flung them back in dazzling showers. Crossed swords and lances hung flaming their bright points. The tables which spread close to the walls were loaded with bowls, flagons, ewers, chalices, pyxes, patens, goblets, beakers, and drinking horns of ivory ringed with silver with enormous bottles of rock crystals, dishes of carved gold and silver with coffers, with reliquaries in the shape of churches, with mirrors, with candelabra and censers as wonderful for their workmanship as for their material, and with thuribles in the shape of monsters, and on one of the tables a game of chess made of moonstones was spread out. Choose, B, King Locke repeated. But raising her eyes above these riches, B saw the blue sky through an opening in the roof, and as if she had understood that the light of the sky alone gave these things their brightness, she only said, Little King Locke, I would like to go back to earth. Then King Locke made a sign to his treasurer, who, lifting some heavy curtains, showed a huge coffer barred with plates and patterns of iron, the coffer being open, there streamed from it a thousand beams of various and charming colors. Each of these beams sprang from a precious stone, cunningly cut. King Locke dipped his hand in them, and they saw rolling in luminous confusion the violet amethyst of the maiden stone, the emerald of three natures, the other one dark green, the other one called honeyed emerald because it is the color of honey, the third of a bluish green called beryl, which bestows beautiful dreams. The eastern topaz, the ruby beautiful as the blood of brave men, the dark blue sapphire called the male sapphire, and the pale blue sapphire called the female sapphire, the alexandrite, the hyacinth, the turquoise, the opal, whose lights are softer than those of the dawn, the hyalite, and the Syrian garnet. All the stones were of the most limpid water and the most luminous color, and big diamonds cast their dazzling white lights among these colored fires. Be choose, said King Locke. But Bee shook her head and said, 
Little King Loch, I prefer a single one of the sunbeams which strike the slates of the Castle of the Clarities to all these jewels. Then King Loch had a second coffer opened which held nothing but pearls. But all these pearls were round and pure, their changing lights took on all the tints of the sky and the sea, and their glow was so mild that it seemed to express a lovely thought. Take some, said King Loch. But B answered him, Little King Loch, these pearls remind me of the looks of George of the White Moor. I like these pearls, but I like the eyes of George better. Hearing these words, King Loch turned away his head. Yet he opened a third coffer and showed the young girl a crystal in which a drop of water had been a prisoner since the earliest time of the world, and when shaken, this crystal showed this drop of water moving. He also displayed to her pieces of yellow amber in which insects more dazzling than jewels had been taken for millions of years. Their delicate legs and frail membranes were indistinguishable, and they would have taken wing again if some power had melted like ice their scented prison house. These are great natural curiosities. I give them to you, Bee. But Bee answered, Little King Locke, keep the amber and the crystal, for I could not give back their liberty either to the fly or the drop of water. King Locke looked at her for a time and said, Bee, the richest treasures will be well placed in your hands. You will possess them and they will not possess you. The greedy are the prey of their own gold. Only those who despise wealth can possess it with safety. Their souls will always be greater than their fortune. Having spoken thus, he made a sign to his treasurer, who presented a crown of gold on a cushion to the young girl. Receive this jewel as a sign of the esteem we have for you, Bee, said King Locke. Henceforward, you will be called the Princess of the Dwarfs. And he himself placed the crown on the brow of Bee. And that is... Chapter 11 of B, the Princess of the Dwarfs, and we finally get B as the Princess of the Dwarfs. We've seen all of the riches that King Locke has, and B has refused them all, and as such has become a princess. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.